you know. But still, it wasn't really talked about a lot. Kind of stay in denial of it, being afraid of, of what was to come. Now, Joanne has invited over members of Rick's family. She wants to find out more about the mysterious illness that killed her husband and now threatens her children. Today, for the first time, the family is revealing its secrets. Cousin Marilyn lists a shocking death toll amongst her relatives. Barbara, my mother, died of the disease as well as her sister Joyce, her sister Joanne, they were twins and her brother Donald, another brother Paul. I've also lost three first cousins to the disease. If there's something, an ache or a pain that lasts for two or three days, then I automatically think this is it. I, I, have, I have the disease, this is the beginning. It's always there. We inherit about half our genes from each of our parents. So where one parent has the fatal insomnia gene, each child has a 50-50 chance of inheriting it. You have one gene that has FFI on it. You have a second gene from your unaffected parent that usually pairs up with that. If you get the good gene, you don't have the disease. If you get the gene with the FFI, you get FFI. But chance was not kind to the White's Aunt Judy. I married into the family, my husband's family. He passed away, and then my son passed away, and my daughter. And I'm thankful we had no more. If I'd known it was there, I would not have had children. Because I think that's not a gift you want to give to an unborn child. To help Megan and Andy, their grandfather, Graydon White, has put together a family tree hoping to jog memories and to find out where it all started. So, what do the red stars mean for you? Red stars are the ones that had the disease. And they died from it? And they died from it. Graydon lost not only his son Rick to the disease, but his wife too. Our genetic malfunction, if you might, comes down here. We realized over the years that there must be a reason for this. Somewhere there was a genetic deviant, if you will, and we want to, want to find it. There's a, a, a very wealthy Italian family doing the same thing. Eight years after Dr. Reuter watched helplessly as two sisters from the Italian family succumbed to the disease, their brother, Silvano, appeared at his surgery. In 1983, I saw the first symptoms of the disease in the younger brother of the two sisters who had died. He sweated a lot, and he said he slept very little. So I gave him some sedatives, but they only made him worse. Fearing for his patient's life, he turned in desperation to one of Italy's top neurologists. I got a call from a doctor from the Venice area. He told me about a patient of his who was showing symptoms of a rapidly progressive illness. The thing that particularly got me interested was these people died because they were no longer able to sleep. He immediately replied, come tomorrow. So I guess he believed me. Or maybe he realized how desperate I was. Within a week, his patient, Silvano, was in the care of the Bologna Hospital neurologists. The shots they recorded to study his condition are part of an extremely rare archive. Resigned to death, he wanted only to help the doctors find a cure for future victims. He had seen the course of the disease, and he knew very well that he was going to end in death. He said, consider me as a guinea pig in order to know about this 
disease, this curse which runs my family. I must say he was a very, very, very brave man. The disease and the stigma of madness that it inflicts on its victims have caused the Italian family such anguish that they have chosen to remain anonymous. The doctors in Bologna monitored Silvano's sleep pattern over several 24-hour periods. The patient really was always awake. Not real uh, clear wakefulness, but he could not sleep. But remarkably, Silvano did appear to dream. Every now and again, Silvano made some simple gesture, like combing his hair or buttoning up his pajamas. And once, he even gave a kind of military salute. I asked him, what was that about? He said, I was dreaming that I was a guard at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. So how come Silvano was dreaming, but not sleeping? Sleep can be divided into three basic types. Light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep, or dreaming sleep. So it is in REM sleep that we dream. The function of dreams is not really understood, but REM sleep produces artificial noise, and it might be that uh, your brain is trying to make sense of this artificial stimulation and creating the dream around it. REM stands for the rapid eye movements, which characterize our dream sleep. But when we dream, our brain does not rest. I see it more as a sort of a non-wakefulness rather than sleep. It doesn't provide an adequate form of recovery, and it is no substitute for real or deep sleep. Silvano was literally dying for real sleep. Even the specialists who treated him had never seen anything like it. This patient never had any deep sleep, the really refreshing type of sleep. His eyelids would droop as if he wanted to sleep, but he couldn't. The fact is, our brain cannot function without sleep. The brain contains billions and billions of neurons. It requires a huge amount of our energy, and uh, it needs sleep because of the, the important parts of our brain, the higher centers, the cortex, they work so hard in wakefulness. And the only opportunity for the brain to actually go offline or relax at any extent is by sleeping. You can't do it any other way. Silvano was deprived of deep sleep for eight months. His relentless insomnia indicated that his brain was malfunctioning. In the last weeks of his life, it sent his body into overdrive. By the end, he was just a living torso, animated by continuous muscle contortions and twitchings, which are caused by the enormous increase in his vegetative activity. And after months of this hyperactivity, the end came rapidly. Professor Lugarese was determined to find out what had caused the bizarre and painful cocktail of symptoms that killed Silvano. He turned to a former student who now worked in Cleveland, Ohio, and who boasts one of the largest collections of diseased brains in the United States. He called me and said, we have a, a, new, a case of a new disease uh, characterized by the loss of ability to sleep. I said, Gambetti, immerse yourself in this case. Drop everything else. Focus on this, because we will make a great discovery. Dr. Gambetti grasped the opportunity. Being such an important brain, one of the residents uh, who was in our laboratory flew to Bologna to carry the brain. The instructions from Bologna were clear. We said, look in detail in the brainstem, look in detail in the hypothalamus. We were wrong. We were completely wrong. Twenty years ago, it was believed that sleep was controlled from within these areas, deep down at the back of the brain. The brain stem was examined very, very carefully, and yet uh, no detectable lesions were seen there. However, it uh, became very apparent that uh, a very 
severe lesions was present in the thalamus.